Is it the Fed pivot ultimately, or is it something else? Yeah. Bottom line is typically the Fed pivot. Now, maybe finally gold at this bottom around 1600. Silver's unfortunately going to trade more like copper, which might be bottoming. I don't think it is yet because China is still in a major economic contraction and maybe not show it yet, but it's still in decline. Um, but the key thing is the Fed pivot. I mean, so let's remember, look at the facts. Uh, gold has made new highs this year in terms of the euro and the yen and most other currencies. And typically that's a sign to eventually do it in the dollar. So it's doing what it's supposed to and as far as helping protect people from currency dis debasement. Now, the dollar's been absolutely strong on the back of this strong, you know, this most un almost unprecedented Fed tightening in the face of economic weakness now. So that's the main sledgehammer for gold. But I think that sledgehammer is pounding out a foundation. I think by, by the time we speak, maybe this time next year, Ivan, um, the key enduring theme will be enduring deflation, uh, recession, and gold should be one of the better performers as we pivot towards a, a weaker, uh, you know, towards Fed maybe easing. The point is, the fact is, in my lifetime and potentially in the future, but we've never, we will probably never see the ease of easing we've seen from the past from the Fed, particularly right. in my lifetime since being in the trading pits in the 80s where I started the business. I do believe what Norio Rubini says, the Fed's going to eventually wimp out. My interest rate colleague um, in Bloomberg Intelligence, um, Ira Jersey, pointed out he fully expects bond yields are peaking. Now, mm -hmm. rates are a different story, and he's been spot on this year. So I like to sometimes go to my colleagues. That's the key thing about in Bloomberg Intelligence. When we all kind of aligned, last year we didn't. I was the predominant bear out there mm -hmm. um, and didn't get a lot right, but basically <laughs> got the great reversion of 2022 right. And it's just kicking in, but gold should come out of hand. Silver eventually, all the precious metals eventually, but gold should be the number one as we head to this enduring deflationary recession, which is my base case. Mm -hmm. Now, with all the chaos uh, going on in the market, where are you putting your money right, right now? Is it more gold or where are you putting it? So I can't give investment advice, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, my course. job is to say this is where markets are going. I fully expect in the next few years, uh, U.S. long bonds, gold, and eventually Bitcoin will be some of the best performers. Now, Bitcoin has broken down hard last week, as we're probably going to be hitting this the tape, hitting this the tape on on the weekend, mm -hmm. and that's a key risk off indicator for everything. But it's becoming a digital version of gold. And the way I look at it is. Um, being bullish and involved in allocating to gold without some Bitcoin and some Ethereum in that space may be somewhat highly risky because Bitcoin is becoming the digital version and the world going digital, but it's just a NASA NASA. But I do fully expect gold to, my base case in gold is it's going to eventually get above $2,000 an ounce when we least expect it in terms of dollar and then never look back. It's that kind of technical and fundamental setup. And right now it's that pain that you have to take in markets before the game. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, we're seeing huge numbers get uh, depleted from the LBMA and the COMEX. Do you believe that trend will continue as well? Yeah, and the um, that I have found has not been a good leading indicator for prices in terms of there's so much shenanigans that go on in precious and all metals inventories mm -hmm. now. And one of the lessons I learned is I just haven't found a high R squared correlation, and sometimes I find the exact opposite correlations why lots of copper and gold and things like this. So I don't find that as a good indicator. No, some of my colleagues do watch it. In terms of gold, I look at the macro to me that's the 10, mm -hmm. particularly in this year. Everything else is a five or lower, and particularly when the Fed's pounding this hard, that's the predominant 10 on the planet for everything. Um, so to me, that stuff is all kind of noise. In some of the other commodities, it makes a lot of sense to watch it. Things like stocks to use. I watch that very closely in crude oil and in the grains. But I have not found that as a good way for indicating prices in the metals, particularly gold and um, silver um, and copper. And But some of my other colleagues do. I'm, I'm looking at the macro. The way I see it is what's going to happen is the enduring trend of gold outperforming copper should resume. Right. And that's kicking in. I mean, copper at the time we're speaking is down 16% on the year. Gold's down six. I think that's going to accelerate as we head towards this global economic recession. Um, just an FYI, my Bloomberg economics team, um, uh, economics leader in uh, 
in China says we need another 25% correction in that property crisis. So when you see that, you don't want to you don't want to be buying copper yet. Eventually, that's going to be the time and thing to do. But gold, to me, is the one to look at this shining star if we head towards this type of scenario, which I expect. Key question I like to ask Ivan is what stops this reversion process of the whole world tilting towards recession as if central banks are tightening and then the pendulum swinging back towards enduring deflation, which was kind of the case before COVID, which I don't think it's changed. It just got spiked with massive money supply and that money supply is being taken away now. And at some point, we'll have to start pushing on the pumps again a little bit as economies absolutely de- decline. So look at Europe, almost a reset, clearly recession already. Our model for US 100% in China, you see what's happening with the econo- with the political situation there, pushing back towards the years of Mao. Um, I, I see gold as potentially the shining um, asset. But then, you know, what typically what happens is, uh, is um, silver outperforms, but, you know, only if it gets copper on its side. Right. 